right, folks, this is Jason with the Primal Outdoors channel, and we are out camped on a beautiful river out here today. Uh, we're actually not too far out of town. We're waiting to get the van back. It's uh, at the mechanics right now, getting a few minor mechanical issues sorted out. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to come out, get a nice spot, overlook a beautiful river, and uh, we had talked here about the new Jackery 1000 that is coming out from Jackery on March 18th. So if you're watching this after that, it should be out. If you're watching it before that, uh, be looking for it on the 18th if this turns out to be something you're interested in. So what I want to do right now is uh, we'll get into this unit and uh, talk about a few things that I like and a few things that um, I wish they would improve upon. Firstly, the Jackery, this Jackery 1000 is a 1002 watt hour system. Uh, it weighs in at about 22 pounds and is 13.1 by 9.2 by 11.1 .1 inches. Uh, so it's still a fairly small unit. Um, not too extremely heavy, but definitely not uh, super light either. I wouldn't want to have to carry it very far. Um, I kind of see it more as a great for the overlanding or van life community as a secondary power source to their, to their main battery. Uh, so it would kind of, I kind of see it uh, as much as anything kind of living in a vehicle uh, when you're out uh, doing some overlanding or a car camping or van life type stuff. Not too much of something that I'd want to pack very far away from the vehicle because it's weight. I'd probably opt for one of the smaller jackeries if I was doing, if that was something that I wanted to do. But if you are looking for something for your vehicle to kind of um, expand your power capabilities without actually going through the cost and headache of adding a dual battery system, I think this could be a, a good option. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go along. But let's start off with uh, talking about the front and some of the ports. So one of the cool things about this Jackery that is new is it's an MPPT uh, compatible charge controller. So you have your typical uh, charge input here, which uses all the uh, regular Jackery inputs as far as their cigarette lighter input, uh, their solar input, one of their, one of their uh, proprietary solar panels, and then also an AC uh, input. But the cool thing is, is you also have a mini Anderson plug here. So now you can actually charge it off third party solar systems, which I think is going to be really open this up to a lot of different types of configurations. Um, you are limited to 30 volts, so you do have to keep that in mind if you're designing a solar system. But uh, I, it does definitely open up um, a lot of functionality with this unit. Uh, with the fact that it's MPT, MPPT compatible, um, this Jackery does charge faster than its previous Jackeries as well. I've noticed that this Jackery actually charges about twice as fast as the 500. So even though it's um, 500 watts bigger, it roughly charges in about the same amount of time as the 500, which I think is really great. Uh, moving on, you still have the typical Jackery display, which will show you how many watts are going out, how many watts are coming in, and show you the life you got left on your battery. Uh, it's clear and easy to read, and I really like that about the Jackery. Uh, one of the features that really attracted me to this one is the fact that this one has multiple AC ports on it, and they're all pure sine wave, just like the previous Jackeries before them. Um, my plan for this Jackery is for it to live in the van and I'm going to be running my laptop and a secondary monitor off of this. So I'm definitely going to be using two of these ports. Another thing that I think a lot of people will like is the fact that it has two USB-C ports and a quick charge port. And it of course does have a regular style USB port as well. Then uh, off the side you have a dust cover covering your 12 volt cigarette lighter port. This is a 10 amp port. And uh, you know you can plug anything, any device that basically you would plug into a car cigarette lighter uh, into that. So uh, all in all, it's uh, you know fairly compact, has pretty much most of the features I think most people will want in a power source with a lot of power. Um, now let's talk a little bit about the charge times. All right, so using Jackery's charge devices, uh, if you're using the AC, it takes about seven hours. If you're using two of their Solar Saga. 100s in parallel then it takes about eight hours and if you're in good sun and if you're using a cigarette lighter port they're saying roughly about 14 hours 
Now I have done some testing with my truck. Um, I have an older model vehicle that has the older style alternator. So I'm putting out about 14.1 volts at my cigarette lighter port when the alternator is running. So with that calculation, I think I can charge this thing a little over 11 hours. Um, I'm sure Jackery is being a little bit uh, conservative in their charge times just in the fact that there are varying factors if you have a newer vehicle uh, a lot of those once they charge the start battery up they will drop their voltage down to like 13.8 and so therefore you won't um, it won't charge quite as fast also if you have a vehicle that the uh, cigarette lighter ports actually stay on once the vehicle's off you're gonna drop down to like 12.6 or 12.4 or even, even lower. And so of course that's actually gonna uh, take longer for it to charge as well. Now, I don't recommend charging this unit on your vehicle if it's uh, not running, just because it's just not good for your start battery to deeply discharge. Uh, start batteries are not meant to be deeply discharged. Now, I did see on another YouTube channel that they did some testing and this thing does shut off at 11, point, uh, 11 volts. So in that case, if you are charging off your start battery, uh, it should leave you enough to start the vehicle. But at that point, you're going to be you're going to be kind of running down the bottom of the barrel. And if uh, you know you got really cold environment, you could find yourself um, unable to start the restart your vehicle. So again, I would only charge it when the vehicle is running. As far as using the AC to charge it, um, I have done that. I've charged it several times off AC ports at my buddy's house. And it, I would say definitely within about seven hours it takes, um, it's right around in there. I never actually perfectly timed it, but just kind of based off what I, I saw, that did seem to be a fairly accurate number that seven hours is about what it takes to charge it on AC. I have not tried to charge it on the Solar Saga. I only have one of the Solar Sagas in this first place and it's springtime right now. And as you can probably tell, um, the lighting keeps changing behind me and that's because it's cloudy and we're just not getting any days that you're gonna get really good full sun. So I haven't tried that. And of course, um, you know, I don't have an, I don't, um, I haven't tried it on this port either, but I have seen some other YouTube channels that have done some testing on this port and um, it does seem to work well as long as, you know, 30 volts is all you put into it. Moving on to the AC ports. So um, I played with the AC ports a little bit with a heat gun. Um, I have been able to run the AC ports up above the thousand watts. So running my heat gun, um, Turning these on, there we go. So running my heat gun, you'll be able to see here that the um, wattage that it can go up to, I've got it on high, and it will show here in a minute, um, which is one of my kind of complaints about the, this particular Jackery, for whatever reason, these ports are really slow to show you what the wattage is. I didn't ever have that problem with the previous Jackeries, but now finally we're starting to see that the wattage, but you can see we're running actually um, 11, you know, 1100 watts, and I've ran this for quite a while at 1100 watts, and it didn't seem to have any problem doing it. But as soon as I kick it up to the higher setting, which is um, on my heat gun, that will actually push it to closer to 1400 watts, and you'll see that the AC ports will just shut off. Um, so they say it peaks, it has a peak of 2000, but um, it seems to shut off at uh, 14, at least it did one of my prior tests but it's proving me wrong at this point but then again we're it looks like we're only getting up to like 1200 watts um, on the up there just shut off my um, thing when it hit 13 but the AC is still on I'm not really sure what's going on here so now the Jackery shut off so I'm not really sure there. That's a little different than what it had done pre previously. Um, we'll just turn it back on and see what it does. So it fires right back up. My, my uh, heat gun fired right back up. Um, again, I'm on the highest setting and my heat gun is a, a 1600 watt heat gun to kind of give you an idea and I'm on its highest setting. Again, you'll see a big delay in the watt change here um, showing me how many watts goes in. That's a little bit annoying. Um, like I said, I didn't have that problem with the previous Jackeries. So we'll just kind of see here for a minute, see what it does. And then again, my heat gun shut off and the Jackery I think will follow suit, which 
Kind of weird that there's a delay. This When I was testing this this morning, it wasn't delaying. It, the jacket was actually shutting off and the heat gun shutting off at the same time. So that's a little different. But either way, you know, you get much above 1400 watts and it shuts off. Um, but again, like I said, it's rated for a thousand watts. So I, I think that if you had a device that, you know, maybe when you first kick it on, it would it has a little peak like sometimes um air conditioners things like that when you first kick them on they they'll peak up real quick but then they'll drop back down um as long as it's not too it peaks up too high for too long uh you might be all right as long as it doesn't maintain over say 11 or 1200 watts um on that but anyways i mean for most people running stuff out in the field i think that will be plenty and um and good so let's talk about the um, the USB ports. As far as the USB ports, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to talk too much about them. They work like the USB ports should. You got the quick charge port. You got USB-C if you got devices that need to charge via USB-C. All right, so now let's talk about the 12-volt port. And I specifically want to talk about the 12-volt port for people that are interested in using a unit like this to run a refrigerator, a DC refrigerator like my Snowmaster or a uh, Dometic. Um, or Ingle or whatever, whichever one, as long as it uses a 12 volt port to run. Um, people have asked me many times on the old units or the previous units like the 240 or, or the uh, 500, if it would be a good unit for running a refrigerator. And you know, previously I would, in, in those units I would say not really. And the reason why is it's not that the unit couldn't run the refrigerator, it definitely can, it has all the power to do that. but. Uh, Jackery has a, and those units had a cutoff that if the port detected less than 10 watts for three hours, it would shut the port off. So if you were in situations like where we are now, where I'm, uh, the nights are very cold, the days are very warm, I would run into situations if I tried to run my refrigerator on it that when I woke up in the morning, my uh, refrigerator would be off because the Jackery port shut off because the refrigerator just didn't run that much during the night. So it wouldn't detect it and therefore shut it off and that, and that was a problem. That's still actually a problem with this unit but not as much of a problem because now they extended the, shut, the cutoff from 3 hours to 12 hours. So now your refrigerator would have to be off for 12 hours before this Jackery would shut off. Now I still have had it happen because we've still had some very cold uh, nights and days where it just really didn't, my refrigerator just didn't really have to put much work in. So it's still a possibility and you still have to keep an eye on it. But I'm gonna feel like if for most people that are gonna be out overlanding or van lifing uh, in warmer climates um, or during warmer months, that that's gonna be less of an op uh, a problem with this unit. So I do think that it's really a good um, unit for people that are thinking about getting something like this versus putting in a very complicated and costly uh, dual battery system into their uh, overland rig or into their van. I am actually still, even with the use of these units, I'm still planning on building a dual battery system for my van because of the fact that I do live out of it and I need, I need a way to be able to recharge my Jackery. The Jackery is going to be... Uh, my main power source from my laptop and my monitor, but you know after I've ran on it all day long I still need a way to recharge it and I again like I talked before I'm not a fan of recharge, you know relying heavily on my start battery for recharging the unit um, So I'm going to have a dual battery system to kind of run some of my peripherals uh, in my van and then also recharge my Jackery and I can tell you that just the amount of money I've had to put into good quality marine grade wire, good quality marine grade circuitry, uh, my DC to DC, and not even buying my battery, I could cover the cost of this unit. So um, dual battery systems are great, but they're, like I said, they're, they're complicated and costly, and if they're not done right, can be actually dangerous. This is a very simple solution for people that just want to go out for two to five days. I have been able to run this, um, my refrigerator, you know, in the van on days that are warmer. This thing ran my, my refrigerator for um, three to five days. Now, again, the temperatures were fairly cool and the refrigerator wasn't working really hard. So um, it might um, run it a little long or a little shorter if you're really dealing with hot days. But the fact that you can be recharging this when your vehicle is running, 
Um, I do feel pretty confident in saying that the average person would be able to go anywhere from three to five days out on a uh, extended vehicle trip on a on a single charge with this if you you know started off with it fully charged. So that's kind of my two cents on it right there as far as the DC voltage uh, goes. It's the same with the AC ports as well. If it detects less than 10 watts for 12 hours, it will shut the AC ports off as well. So just kind of be aware of that. Like I said, the older units was three hours, so it is a big improvement getting the you know the uh, full 12 hours out of it. All right, guys, so let's wrap up this uh, look at the Jackery Explorer 1000. The things that I like is the fact that obviously it's more capacity. You know, the, I really am excited about this new input. I think that's gonna open up a lot of new possibilities uh, for charging the unit in your vehicle. Uh, I really like the fact that there's three AC ports now versus just one AC port on the other units. And I'm glad that they extended the time from three hours to 12 hours on the cutoff on, on the ports. Now, the cons as far as I'm concerned so far that I have found is I kind of just wish they'd get rid of that cutoff altogether. If I turn on a port, I want it to just stay on indefinitely or until the battery reaches a level that it would be unsafe for it to continue to be on. Um, I think it should just stay on. The other con is, is like I said, there's something goofy going on with the uh, reading on the display. It doesn't seem to be very quick. Again, that didn't seem to be a problem with the previous unit, so I'm not sure why this particular one is having that problem. And I have seen other reviewers talk about that, so it's not just my particular Jackery. I know it's something pro uh, wrong with the Jackeries altogether. Maybe they'll have that worked out by launch, so hopefully that will be the case. Also, I should mention there is a flashlight on the thing, which I think is totally pointless. This thing's 22 pounds. Nobody's gonna use it as a flashlight, but um, that's my opinion. Anyways, other than that, I do think that this could be a great solution for somebody looking to add some external power to their vehicle, run a refrigerator, you know, charge some devices when you're in the field, camera gear, some things like that. Again, like I said, it's a lot cheaper and easier solution than putting in a properly designed dual battery system. So I think that's definitely an option for a lot of people. So anyways, if you're interested in this unit, like I said, it's not available to mar till March 18th. If you're watching after that, then go ahead and check below the link. If, it's, if you're watching before that, just wait till the 18th and I will we'll put a link down there or check my website and I'll have a link to the Jackery on my website. I'm also going to check with Jackery and see if I can get you guys a uh, discount if you buy through my link. I'm hoping to be able to do that. And um, anyways, yeah, so I hope you guys found this uh, video useful. If you did find it useful, please give it a like. If you have any comments or questions, leave those down below and I'll catch you guys again outside. Like a bird on a tree. I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see From up here The world seems small We can sit together It's so beautiful You and me Meant to be in the great outdoors, forever free.